So if we have a set of data, we want to describe the data in terms of the central value or the central tendency, and also the spread of the data. So if we look at central tendency first and use an example, um, so let's say we have these values, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, 8. The most common way to express the central tendency is with the mean. And the mean is just the sum of all the values divided by the number of values. So this would be 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values, so we divide by 6. That gives us an answer of 4.5. The problem with the mean is if you have a very high or very low value, it can kind of uh, skew the result, so it doesn't really give a good indication of the, uh, of the central value. Um, in that case, you may want to use something called the median. And the median is... Um, the way you figure out median is if you put all the numbers in order, as we've done already, then the median would be the central value. Uh, so in this case, we actually have six values, so there's two central values. Both of them are fours, so our median would be four. If you had two different central values, then you would average them. And if you have an odd number of values, obviously it's, it's the value that's in the middle. Another one which we don't often use is called the mode. Um, this just says which value occurs most often. So in this case, 4 occurs twice. So we'd use 4 um, as the mode. Not used often in science, but it is. Um, for example, if you did a questionnaire and you had people give uh, answers between 1 and 5, you might want to know which is the most common answer. Um, another way of measuring a central value or central tendency that we don't really use in chemistry, but I look want to bring it up anyway, because it will help us um, understand standard deviation later. It's something called the root mean square. It's used in mathematics, electrical engineering. It, its name describes what it does. It's the, um, the mean of the square values. So what you do is you square all the values. Um, so 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 4 squared plus 6 squared plus 8 squared. If I can squeeze that in. Uh, and then you divide by the number of values, so you add all those up. Oh, I'm sorry, it's already added up. Oops. You add up all the squares, divide by the number, which is 6, and then take the square root. And if you do that, the root mean square of these values gives you 4.9. If we think about the spread, um, if we want to let someone know the idea of the spread of the numbers, the easiest way is with the range. That's just the maximum value minus the minimum value. It gives you some indication of the total spread. Um, really though, you want to know uh, how far values are spread around a central value. So to do that, we can use something called a deviation. And deviation is... Uh, the distance between a value and the average value. And we use the positive number there. Um, that gives you uh, information about one value. We really want to know information about all the, all the data. So we need to know the average or the mean deviation. So we can also use a mean deviation, which is exactly what it says. Um, we take all the deviations. Add them up, divide by the number. We actually use uh, n minus 1 here. Um, it turns out you don't really need all the values. If you know the mean and all the data except one value, then you can figure out that last value. So we don't really need it. So we can use n minus 1. Um, probably a more common way to measure spread is with the standard deviation s. And the reason I, I talked about root mean square earlier. Standard deviation is really the root mean square of the deviations. So if we take the deviation, square it, add up all those values, and then take the mean, and we're going to use n minus 1 again. So this is the mean square of the deviation, and then square root. So root mean square deviation. Uh, 
if we were to square that value, then that gets rid of this, the, um, the root, in which case we have something called the variance. And another value that's useful is something called uh, the relative standard deviation. Deviations depend upon the size of the values. So often we want to have something that's relative uh, so we can compare things with different values. So the way you do that is just to divide the standard deviation by the mean and then multiply by 100 to get the percent.